Porsche has updated the Panamera with some new engines and some subtle design tweaks. In fact, they're so subtle that you're really going to have to pay attention to this next bit. There are some reshaped headlamps, new LED daytime running light strips and larger front air intakes. Round the back, the revised tail lights and a new bumper are the major changes. And that's pretty much it really. Oh, I almost forgot there's some fresh alloy wheel designs too. Inside the new Panamera, it's essentially the same as before, which means a high quality cabin that looks and feels gorgeous. And yes, there may be a bewildering array of buttons, but that does mean all the car's functions are easy to access. It's easy to access the rear of the car as well because the doors open wide enough. And once you're back here, you find that you've absolutely got acres of space. I mean, look at the knee room I've got. That seat's in my usual driving position. I'm five foot ten and a half, and yeah, loads of room and headroom. Admittedly, this car is only a two seater here in the back, but you know, it's not a limousine, it's a sports car for four people. Really, little has changed with the Panamera, apart from some new engines in addition to the V6, V8 and V8 twin turbo petrols. So let's start with a new Panamera e-hybrid, which now has plug-in technology that enables it to do over 90 miles per gallon. Also, there's a new twin turbo V6 petrol, which can do 0 to 60 in just 4.8 seconds when you've got it fitted with a Sport Chrono package. The big news though, is the new 3-litre V6 diesel. It's really quiet, it's extremely smooth, and it's very, very quick. Now, it's got 296 brake horsepower, which is about 50 horsepower more than you used to get in the old Panamera diesel. And 0 to 62 miles an hour, that takes just six seconds. The bigger deal, though, is the torque. It's got 650 newton metres of torque, and that means that when you're just cruising along and you, you want to overtake some slow-moving traffic, you just plant your right foot and this thing just flies past. You really can enjoy all that performance as well as the Panamera has pin-sharp handling that really belies its huge size. The Panamera now comes with torque vectoring as standard and that alters the amount of power sent to each individual rear wheel and that helps boost corner exiting grip and overall makes the car more fun to drive. Now, driving purists may be a little bit disappointed to hear that you can no longer get a manual version of the Panamera, but the reason for that is quite simple. Porsche never sold any. And to tell you the truth, an automatic gearbox suits this car much better anyway, and the autos are very good. And of course, if you want to change gear yourself, you can do by using the steering wheel mounted paddles. And then, when you just want to cruise about, the smooth gearboxes provide effortless progress. Speaking of which, the Panamera is a very comfy car to travel in, especially if you have the adaptive dampers in comfort mode. Although, on the entry-level cars, they're actually an option, which will cost you over a grand. That's a problem, you see, with any Porsche. Once you start adding stuff, the price can get out of control. They're pretty expensive to begin with, aren't they? And if you click here, you can see the exact pricings for the Panamera. Now, I'll admit that you do get stuff like sat-nav, leather seats, and parking sensors as standard. And believe me, you will be needing those parking sensors because this huge car is an absolute pig to park. But if you want to add things like, I don't know, USB import and iPod connectivity, that's £224. The rear windscreen wiper is £249. And if you want Bluetooth connectivity with this mobile handset, it's over a grand. And actually, Porsche, you know, you can keep that. I think I'll just use my phone with these hands-free headphones. Save myself a lot of money. All right. Then there's the boot. It's a good size and you can fold the seats down flat. Shame the parcel shelf is a little bit tricky to remove. The sloping tailgate means that load space isn't very deep. Finally, of course, there is the design because you know, to some people, this is an ugly car and the changes don't go anywhere near far enough to alter that. And if you're one of those people, you may prefer the BMW 6 Series Grand Coupe, which you can watch our review of up here, or the Mercedes CLS, which you can watch our video review of down here. 
Guys, you can also watch our very latest video review by clicking down here. And if you click on our logo, you can subscribe to the Carbuy YouTube channel.